Welcome to a brief review of the nomenclature of branched alkanes. Recall that a branched alkane is defined as a completely saturated hydrocarbon, which contains at least one branch within the carbon chain, meaning it is not a continuous linear chain of carbon atoms. Now let's review very briefly the IUPAC rules for this type of nomenclature. First, we identify the parent hydrocarbon, which is defined as the longest continuous carbon chain within the alkane. Recall that this is not always the chain which is depicted as being straight left to right or top to bottom within the representation, and it's important that we scan the entire drawing. Once we've identified the parent hydrocarbon, our next step is to identify and name all of the substituents which result from that definition of the parent hydrocarbon. In step three, we assign numbers to each atom within the parent hydrocarbon in such a way as to produce the scheme with the lowest single starting substituent number. In the event of ties, we go alphabetically, and in the event of an alphabetical tie, we go on to additional rules. And in the final step, we name the compound, including the identity and locations of each substituent along the parent hydrocarbon chain. Each of these is reported alphabetically. So let's take a look at a few examples. Let's see if we can name this compound, represented as a three-dimensional structure above and as a uh, skeletal structure in two dimensions below. I'll call your attention to the drawing at the base of the slide. First thing that we need to do is identify the parent hydrocarbon. Now in this step, we usually go straight to the uh, parent hydrocarbon being left to right. And that's usually OK, especially in early on when we're showing you simple representations. But you may notice that in this particular example, we could just as well have identified the parent hydrocarbon as this one. In either case, we're going to have a parent hydrocarbon of the same length, and in both cases, we'll have the same substituents. Therefore, it's really not of any consequence which we choose to define as the parent hydrocarbon. So we'll go back to the simpler example. In step two, we identify and name all of the remaining hydrocarbon substituents. Currently, they're shown in black. But let's colorize them and label them each as a methyl group, since each substituent only has a single carbon. So I'm dealing with some sort of trimethyl alkane here. In step three, we number the parent hydrocarbon. And we can do this from either the left side or the right side. And so to be sure that we get the proper numbering system, let's number it from each side and compare. Starting from the left, I have methyl groups in the 4 and 7 positions. If I instead were to number this compound from right to left, I have methyl groups at the 2 and 5 positions. Therefore, I'm going to use the numbering scheme on the lower half of the molecule by virtue of the fact that the lowest number in the scheme is 2 rather than 4. In the final step of the process, I'll name my compound. In this case, it is an 8-carbon parent hydrocarbon with three methyls at the 2, 5, and 5 positions. So this will be an octane. And I will indicate the 2, 5, 5 trimethyl ahead of the octane. This is a 2, 5, 5 trimethyl octane molecule. Let's try another example. Here's a three-dimensional structure and its corresponding skeletal structure beneath. In step one, we'll identify the parent hydrocarbon. And we may be tempted to simply use the chain that we see spanning left to right across the screen. However, this is an eight carbon chain. And there is a longer continuous carbon chain within the molecule. In this case, there is a nine carbon chain, which we can follow if we move upward instead of to the left as we come to this union. So this will be our parent hydrocarbon chain. In our next step, we have to identify and name the substituents. In this case, there are two different kinds of substituents within the molecule. Methyls indicated in green, and an ethyl indicated in purple. So this is going to be some sort of ethyl dimethyl hydrocarbon. Step three, I'll number the parent hydrocarbon. Again, considering the numbering scheme from both ends and making my decision based upon the lowest possible numbering. Labeling from left to right across the screen gives me an ethyl at position 4, 
and my methyl to position 5. If I instead number in the other direction, my ethyl is at position 6 and my methyl is at position 5. Therefore, the lowest possible number comes from my numbering scheme at the top of this molecule, which would be a 4-ethyl-5-5-dimethyl. This is the numbering scheme I will use. Now finally, to name this compound, I count the number of carbon atoms within the main chain, 9. Therefore, I'll call this a no-name molecule. And I will indicate the position and name of each of the substituents alphabetically. So this will be a 4-ethyl-5-5-dimethyl no-name. Notice that I do not consider the D from the di portion of the dimethyl name, but instead I consider the M from the methyl substituent names when defining my alphabetical order. Finally, let's try one more example. In order to name this molecule, first I'll define the parent hydrocarbon. There are several different parent chains which can be used, each of which will give an identical result. In this case, I've numbered the one with the carbons bending downward, but either of the two other ethyl groups could be included within the parent chain, giving the same name for this molecule. Next, I'm going to identify each of the functional groups, excuse me, next I'll identify each of the substituents. There are two methyls and two ethyls. So let's put the numbering system on to our parent hydrocarbon. In this case, if I number from left to right, I have three and six positions. And if I number from right to left, I also will have three and six positions. In the event of such a tie, we use the alphabetical ordering of the substituent names to make our choice. In this case, though each has a three as the first number within the numbering system, the ethyls will win by virtue of the fact that they are alphabetically prior to methyl groups. So to name this compound, I'm going to call it an octane with methyls at the 6 position and ethyls at the 3 position, or 3,3-diethyl-6,6-dimethyl-octane. I would not call this compound 3,3-dimethyl-6,6-diethyl-octane. These are the basic rules for naming of branched alkanes. And they do become more complex as certain exceptions to these rules or ambiguous situations with these rules arise. But in most cases, these will be adequate for you to name whatever compounds you may see on your exams. Later, in another section, we'll attempt to look at cyclic uh, alkanes and also at some alkenes, which contain a functional group rather than only substituents.